Good to see meteorologist Tim Root with your KLEK 102.5 forecast. Cloudy with occasional rain and thunderstorms today and tonight. Gusty winds, highs in the low 60s, and the overnight temperature in the low 40s. That rain activity will let up Friday morning, then partly sunny in the afternoon near 50. Chance of more rain over the weekend, partly to mostly cloudy, the high Saturday and Sunday in the 40s. Your life, your music, we're KLEK 102.5 FM. From Feature Story News, I'm Natalie Powell with your latest world news. The alert level for Indonesia's Anak Krakatau volcano has been raised to its second highest and flights around the volcano are being rerouted. The German military is considering recruiting EU citizens from other countries to address a shortage of skilled workers. And U.S. President Donald Trump has said there are no plans to pull troops out of Iraq following an unannounced visit to the country. It's 9.01. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone, and happy Thursday to you. I hope that you're having a great start to your day. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 102.5 FM. My special guest today for day two of Kwanzaa is Dr. Gabriel Tate, Ms. Tiqua, do you have a last name? Alcorn. Alcorn, and Ms. Quinna Border Smith. We want to thank you all for joining me today. Um, today, our principle that we will be discussing is Kuji Chagulia, which means self determination. Before we get into that, I would like for each of my guests to please give us a, you know, a little bit of background about yourself. Tell us a little bit more about yourself, and I'll start to the right ladies first. <laughs> Great. Hi. Good morning, family. Um, my name is Quinna Border Smith, and um, I currently live here in Jonesboro, married, three children, seven grandchildren, <laughs> and so they are my determination. All right. And, um, I own Little Peeps Palace Child Care, uh, located at 2901 Industrial Drive. It's our baby. It's our infant and toddler program. All right. Thank you so much. And Ms. Tiqua? My name is Atiqua Alcorn. I'm originally from Newport, Arkansas, but I live here in Jonesboro. I have two children, um, a six-year-old daughter, Carmen, and a one-year-old son, Sunster, Munster, uh, Jace. <laughs> I know and about those years. <laughs> I'm an author and a life coach. So. Oh, that's awesome. Now, I'm sure you have a lot to contribute to the conversation when it comes to self-determination. I'm sure you face several things, and many people have tried to steer you in different directions. Yes. Uh, all right, I'm looking forward to hearing more of your story. And Dr. Tate? Hi, I'm Gabriel Tate. Um, I am uh, glad to be here. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, Married, uh, wife Erica Tate, and uh, we have three children. The newest is just 17 weeks old. Oh my goodness! And wow. so uh, that's fun. <laughs> um, I am a professor who teaches photojournalism okay. and uh, diversity in media, and so glad to uh, be here with you to talk about this important topic. All right, so let's just get right into our topic for today. Now, on self-determination, according to the official Kwanzaa website, the definition is to define and name ourselves as we, as well as to create and speak for ourselves. I'm sure we do all in the different professions that you're in. Many people have come to you and tried to sway you in a different direction, or they made you feel like you weren't worthy or equipped to handle whatever you decided to do for your life. And as we know in society, society would try to adorn you with many, many labels based on your situation where you grew up, you know, where you live, or whatever the case, whatever your marital status, whatever your parental status, society would try to label you. (laughs) However, it's up to you to decide, okay, is this what I'm gonna accept for my life or am I going to choose a different path and try to rise above or go a different direction? So let's go ahead and get right into our questions. Um, what are some ways that you have defined yourself when faced with others' opinions of how they think you should act, think, or speak? 
we'll start here. Okay, um, I'll just give you a brief. Um, I stated that I was married, but I'm only five years into okay. the marriage. So I raised three children as a single mom. Okay. Come from a small town and um, being very transparent here because it drives me as far as the self-determination. Uh, each one of my children had a different dad. Okay. And so in that community and in that lifestyle, you're already labeled, okay. you know? Yes, and yes. so within myself, I had to drive past that, okay. you know? And so when you see me and you see my children, we are a unit and it's not a single thing. Okay. And so uh, much prayer, <laughs> much prayer, much prayer <laughs> has been my foundation and my belief in and God and what God has done in my life. And that's what that's what has sustained me. Okay. So you chose to say, okay, you know what, you often say what you want. Exactly. Let me show you what I'm gonna do. <laughs> exactly. All right. <laughs> and so you have to live past the the statistics, uh, being a single mom, mm -hmm. trying to raise three children okay. and uh, living on um, you know the governmental assistance uh, are you gonna do this or can you do something better and so I worked jobs you know I worked um, my first job was um, I worked with other young teens okay. that um, were in the same predicament it was back in Missouri so I was a liaison between it was called healthy mothers healthy fathers okay. baby program and so I went into the homes of young teens uh, that had gone through similar experiences okay. and so from there then I worked at a, um, a, a Restaurant where I made sandwiches, okay. you know, and so I've just kind of You know walked my way on up <laughs> With the children way. and then I've ha I had a support system. Okay. Yeah, and that's very important uh, We need as we mentioned yesterday. We need to kind of get back to that village mentality. Yes of, taking care of each other, not just your next door neighbor, not just your immediate family, but anyone within your community because when we all work together, we grow together. So yes. I'm not gonna get too deep in it. <laughs> yes, yes. Get on my soapbox, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Miss Tequa? I think that people have an odd way of saying, I'm proud of you. Okay. I've never seen it done before, but I'm proud of you, you can do it. And so with that being said, they will cast their fears off on you. But the important thing is to know what you stand for, who you are and know your limits. So if you know those three things, you know yourself and whatever people label you, they, I mean, it won't hold up because you know who you are, you know what you can handle. And whenever people try to label you or do those things, you know, just smile and keep going. Well, I think the, the idea of um, defining oneself is really, uh, linked to where you are in your different stages of life, exactly. right? I mean, for me, grew up in a single parent home. Okay. Uh, my father raised my brother and I, and 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 so for him, it was, hey, what I want you to do is find what your heartbeat is, and then do that, right? But I think the the key takeaway is that we have these multiple identities, right? Okay. And so, single parent business owner. For me, it was, you know, looking at the structure of single parent and then saying, okay, that's not the avenue that I want to walk, okay. right? But then looking at what are the mechanisms that are in place? So are there mentors that are going to guide you and to direct you, right? So that becomes one identity. For me, I was a photojournalist in my previous life, right? Okay. And so then I go to seminary, right? And so it's, am I Reverend Dr. Tate or am I Gabriel Tate, the photojournalist, or am I the husband? And the truth is, is that we are negotiating all of these different identities, right? And so, and so I think what happens is, is that um, <laughs> self-determination or your identity is oftentimes based out of the adversity that you're faced with. Wow. Most definitely. Okay. And I wish I had learned that very early on in my life. Um, I knew in high school that I wanted to go to college. Mm -hmm. Of course, I had a different idea. I wanted to go to fashion design school. Right. But unfortunately, some family events happened and I had to stay closer to home. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up choosing my second. Really wasn't my second. It was just a choice. Right. And it wasn't like my choice. It was just a choice. Right. And so I wasn't really ready and prepared. And I didn't do well with it. And so it took me 
20 plus years to finally right. finish one particular thing in my life. I'm happy that I did go back and get my college degree, but I think if I had and a... that's a kudos. <laughs> yeah. That's a kudos. Most that's definitely. a big deal, right? And sometimes I wonder if I had a, went with my first choice, where would I be? Would that have even been a successful path? I don't know, but right. here we are. <laughs> but now I'm determined to make bigger goals, set bigger goals, and do some things for myself and not allow fears and other people's, like she said, other people's fears yeah. deter me from mm-hmm. what I can and cannot do. Right. Right. <laughs> I want to give a few shout outs to everybody watching. Miss Kendra Porter. She says, speak mother. She says she worked at Blimpy. I remember those days. And good morning to Mr. Jerry on Borders as well. And thank you, and Amanda Donovan. Thank you all for watching, listening. Please share this video. Enjoy the conversation. You can give us a call at 870-277-1080 or drop a message on our Facebook live feed. All right, so let's go into our next question. What have been some of the challenges you have faced to get to this point in your career? So each of you are at different point, you know, in different careers, but you are in what, from an outside perspective, a high point in your career. And I'm sure there were some lower points. So what are some of the challenges that you face just to get oh, here? Wow. <laughs> oh, oh wow, um, my story is just is is phenomenal to okay. me because I can look back and I can see. Um, the trail or the tracks that I've made in the snow and um, didn't stay long you know and uh, it's amazing because um, I started out I graduated in 84 and I too wanted to be a fashion designer (laughs) Um, I have to pull out my um, senior book and you'll see all that stuff I want to be a fashion designer and all those but once I started having children it seemed like all of my desires I put on the back burner to push them okay to make sure they had everything that they needed and so in this season of my life I am beginning to embrace me as okay. well and do the things that I enjoy but along the way I feel like um, our upbringing shapes kind of the path that we go in and um, I can remember um, getting uh, domestic things for Christmas you know being a little housekeeper you know and so and then my mom was a single mom so in our household the next oldest one took care of the younger ones you know uh, we come from 21 21 of us oh wow Wow. yeah (laughs) yes that that was an exciting home yes and so the the next oldest one would care for the younger ones uh as my mother worked okay and so that's kind of where you know i fell in that ditch of caregiving and nurturing and taking care of and all of those things however um uh, i was afforded the opportunity to work um in an in-home setting with uh, a really sweet lady back home okay. and then that's where I took on that business sense of well, I can do this okay. and so I always gravitated to uh, caring for and working for children and I would sit up and just have all kind of books and paper and pencil and written down things and all that stuff and um, just followed it through Okay. And uh, so many challenges, finances, yeah. being a single mom, the finances are not readily available. Mm-hmm. And then the finances and then the long nights, you know, you're having to juggle all the different hats, being a mom, trying to run a business, you know, being a nurse when the children are sick, you know, being a teacher at home yeah, when, you know, yeah, when right. uh, the teacher didn't help them at school. So you got to figure out, wait a minute, how you do all of this? <laughs> And so you juggle the hats. And so it was many, many struggles. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, before we get to you, your daughter, Miss Kendra, left some more comments. She says, um, oh, I want to say, good, um, Jerry says, good morning, y'all. Um, and, so uh, Kendra says, she sacrificed a lot for us and we are forever grateful. Uh, we love our mother. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. And that's, that's a high five. Moment, yeah, that's right? a high five. <laughs> right, that's a high five. <laughs> <laughs> what right. Marvin said, I say, never would have made it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, Ms. Tequa, so what are some challenges you face to get to where you are right now? I went through a deep depression. 
So I was uh, 17 when I had my first child, and I was like, oh, I was supposed to leave for the Navy. I was ashamed to tell anybody. Like, I quit going to church and stuff like that. But my mama, she stood by me, like, and let me know, like, it's okay. Like, life keeps going. I'm the oldest of nine kids, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, I got a... I was trying to set the, the bar okay. for everybody else, but I wasn't trying to set the bar for myself. So when I got into that depression, um, it hit me at the age of 19, and I had to self-reflect. So I'm in this hole with nothing but a mirror, and I had to address the person in the mirror. and was like, okay, I'm about to start living for me. So, I mean, I just thank my mama for that and uh, just helping me through it. And then just like, kind of realizing that I had to take care of me before I could take care of anybody else and then to keep going from there. So anything I said I wanted to do or be from that point on, like I accomplished it, but I made sure it was for me, but for the good of the people that was around me, if that makes sense. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Because all the times that you find yourself doing what other people want you to do, you don't get the joy and satisfaction out of it as if you're doing it for yourself. And it's it's not as in, in my opinion, it's not as enriching um, right. when you're doing what other people want you to do for the sake of, okay, for a prime example, my family, I was raised in a rural family, a lot of older people, and their thought process was go to nursing school, you know, it's quick, and it's easy money, but that's not what I wanted to do, so... By the time I graduated, I had changed. In my senior book, I wrote I wanted to be a doctor, a pediatrician, all this. But in my heart, that's not really what I wanted yeah. to do. And so that's, even though I had started out with, in 95, my degree was going to be in science. When I took my first chemistry class, and I was like, no, <laughs> this is not for me. Right. So I quickly, well, life and had a way of turning things around and I made different decisions so here I am now. So now I'm on the path that I want to be on and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happier for it. Right. So, Dr. Yeah. Um, my One of my mentors, uh, David Emmanuel Goatley, says that um, if a person wants to be an airline pilot but they're afraid of heights, <laughs> they may want to look at a different path. Okay. Right? It doesn't mean that you can't accomplish that but it does mean that those things that are uh, that create this tension or fear you either have to address it or keep it moving okay. and so um, challenges in my career I, I think again it goes back to that identity piece one uh, being an african-american professor is 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 different right because unless you're at a historically black college or university you are the minority right mm -hmm. and so that voice in which you are presenting um, is oftentimes uh, challenged. Um, the shared or lived experiences are different than your uh, majority populations. And so there are oftentimes challenges in how do I negotiate uh, this material in which I am an expert, mm -hmm. right, versus um, the conversations that are going on and um, the lack of experience that many who are coming into the classroom may have, right? And so it's it's this hearing all these voices, but in the same token, staying true, right? Okay. And so um, that becomes a challenge. I think in many ways, as a journalist, that was easy, okay. right? Because people can read your stories, people can look at your images that you create, and they have this emotional connection with who you are okay. and so it's the person behind the mask if you if you will <laughs> yeah. right they never really know wow they just know that wow this person told this story from Iraq or wow this work was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize and and so that helps you to navigate that but when you come into the Academy everything is really about you okay. so to speak it's what have you done that's going to bolster your career and that's kind of a challenge at times, right? Because we're, I don't think we're naturally built to toot our own horns. Yeah. And so, so but, from, but from a challenging standpoint, it's really how do I make sense of the environment that I'm in, right? Understand the systems that are in play, 
and then navigate through those respective systems, right? And and Kane Hope Felder wrote a book called Stony Road We Trod, okay. right? And in that book, it's it's seven essays or it's eleven essays that really deal with um, the African American experience, not only in uh, faith, uh, but in teaching in the classroom and 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 these avenues, right? And then I think contemporarily, if you think about uh, mother to son, well, son, life ain't been no crystal stairs, right? It's it's that is the, the question comes up: How do you navigate when you ha when you have the, the 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 rocky stairs or the the splinters coming up? And exactly. and so and so I think that that's the place where we are learning to overcome those those humble beginnings, if you wow. will. Most yeah. Wow, that's yeah. yes, Thank you. I agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm learning that. Um, what you're talking about navigating the situation you're in, the environment. Um, I'm, mom, I'm a soci well, my degree is in sociology. Yes. And people often think it's linked to social work. Yes and no. Right. Sociology is a study on a deeper of society on of a deeper society. level. Yeah. And so I would love to help implement programs or help people with the money. Yes. Put their money to work in a more better way. Yes. However, you have to be mindful of the people you interact with and what you say and how you approach it. Right. You know, so I do understand. Yeah. I'm constantly trying to I don't want to con I don't want to edit myself or delude <laughs> myself, however, yeah. I need to be mindful yeah. <laughs> yeah. of I, the different situations I'm in and who I'm talking to and the company that I'm around. So yeah. I, right. I would want to say give uh, one shout out before we get ready to go to break from Mr. Denisio Blanchard. Good morning, Adrian Everett. What's going on, Q? Denisio says, good morning, Q. Happy Kwanzaa. Shout out to all the panelists and the hosts, especially my frat brother Rue. <laughs> and spiritual mentor, Dr. Gabriel. Take great job, everyone. All right. Thank you. Thank you all for tuning in, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after these announcements. <laughs> You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Is your spouse close but distant? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. We all know what it's like to have someone sitting right next to us, but whose mind is miles and miles away. In marriage, this can play out when our spouse is physically beside us, but is emotionally distant. To reconnect, here are three steps to take when your spouse is close, but distant. First, recognize it. Avoid being so focused on your own issues and to-do list that you're unable to see when your spouse is being distant. Second, assess it. It's important to take time to reflect on the situation and what could be causing your spouse to be distant. For more ways to reconnect when your spouse is physically close, but emotionally distant, check out my blog at markmerrill.com. Remember, your family first. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K N O M E G A 1908.com. Family Minute is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook. Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. Support for KLEK is brought to you by A few years ago, a customer of ours was very upset over a new car that he bought a couple of weeks ago. He was making a loud noise when he turned his heater on. Our technician called me back to the service department and showed me where mice had put a bunch of peanut holes in his heater fan box. I called Billy and I said, Do you have any peanuts, Billy? He said, Sure, I've got a whole bag full in the garage. I said, I don't think you've got as many as you think you do. I said, that's the problem. Glenn Sane, and God bless our troops. Support for KLEK is brought to you by Attention members and guests, Blues, Live Band, and Southern Soul Showcase this Friday, December 28th, 8 p.m. till midnight at Legends Barbecue Smokehouse, 1025 West Johnson Avenue, Jonesboro, featuring Big Papa G. I got the no money blue. Pyramid City Band. It's party time. It's party time. And Lerone Powers. What's the name of that thing? More info, 870-530-3121. 
This is Senator John Cooper. Jesus told someone to go home to his friends and tell them about the great things the Lord has done. Our family and friends are an especially important part of the Christmas season. Sue and I hope that during the holiday season you will be able to enjoy the holidays with your loved ones. And Merry Christmas and may you all have a great new year. KLEK 102.5 FM is giving you more praise. That's right, KLEK brings to you all Gospel Wednesdays. Every Wednesday, enjoy all of your favorite gospel hits and get your praise on all day long. Plus, the return of the KLEK praise break. Lift up your hands, rejoice, and praise Him all day, all Wednesday, every Wednesday on KLEK 102.5 FM. House of Details, located at 3915 East Highland in Jonesboro, is a proud supporter of KLEK, offering detailing on any type of vehicle, basic wash, hand wash, shampoo, interior cleaning, waxing, buffering, headlight restoration, pickup, delivery, and more with the motto of anything mean we can clean. Details at 870-273-5187. House of Details on Facebook and at klekfm.org. Do you like the music you hear on KLEK 102.5 FM? Do you like the educational programming that we provide? Do you like the service we provide to the community? Do you like having a station to finally call your own that represents you? If so, please stop by or call any of our underwriters or sponsors that you hear on KLEK and tell them thank you for their support. The support of our underwriters and sponsors is vital for us to stay on the air. So be sure to let them know that you thank them for their support. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Today we are discussing Kwanzaa Day 2 principle, which is Kuji Chagulia, which means self-determination. And my special guests are Ms. Quinta Border-Smith, Ms. Tiqua Alcorn and Dr. Gabriel Tate and we're going to just keep rolling in our conversation on self-determination because the next question is how do you translate what you have learned to the individuals that you encounter or in your case your students and then with your babies and your parents and so anybody that you encounter how do you translate what you've learned about self-determination um, to those you encounter <laughs> um I translated by being honest okay. I feel like you very seldomly uh, meet people who are honest about situations okay. anymore like they don't tell you okay I've been through that it was hard getting through it but if you stay focused you can get over it um, and by not being honest with people and telling them okay this is normal to feel this way it's normal to get somewhere and be scared to keep going because of what other people think or something like that we set limitations upon you know generations after us oh, instead of you know just being honest so i like anytime i meet one of my sisters or in, my military sisters or brothers or anything i tell them like if i encounter something i'm honest yeah it was hard but I, you got to stay focused yeah. you can do it if you stay focused so just being honest with people letting them know like the situation is real it's real out here it's like real. no joke <laughs> So, yeah, okay. I agree with Tiqua. <laughs> Honesty and transparency. Okay. Um, it, it's hard work. Yeah. It's hard work. You know, um, you know, in the child care arena, that's my baby. Okay. So I'm caring for and nurturing children, but my business is likewise. Okay. You know, I have to make sure, and I've had to go through different things, different challenges to get it to fit right. Okay. And um, there are many, many, many child care uh, businesses here in this community. However, I can't sit and compare okay. myself to anyone else because I'm not them. That's right. And I give my families me. Okay. And that's the difference. Yeah, you got to do you. Yes, <laughs> I give them me. And so there is a, a model that we all go by. But when I step into those doors, they're getting the best of me. And um, 
I'm very open and honest with my parents. And uh, I, one of my favorite sayings is, some days I win, most days the children win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, some days I go, and you know, I'm in early and I'm there late. I play all day with the children, but behind the scene, I'm doing the paperwork. I'm making sure things are taken care of. So when they come back, everything is ready for the next day because when you put your word out there, that's you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah I think the translation part, I mean, I, I think that they've summed it up well is that you have to be transparent. Okay. Right. Um, and I would add vulnerable. Okay. Right, because I think that vulnerability is um, is a key point. Um, telling them, hey, I don't have all the answers. Yes. Right. Um, um, great question. I didn't think of that. Okay. Right. And so, um, if I'm speaking in hood language, it, it would be that we need a street cred. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that street credibility is really um, what allows our messages to translate. For me, it's uh, I preached on Sunday, and the and the message was keeping it 100. Okay. Right. It's that it's that ability to be true to self, right. vulnerable, and you know, transparent. Mm -hmm. You know, and giving it the best that you can okay. um, for the greater good of what it is mm -hmm. that we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Okay. And we see um, we often see people struggle with moving through different stages of their life because they're not true to their self. They're not honest about what they're dealing with in that moment and they try to cover and I'm a look, uh -oh. I get the we're gold gonna have star. church here <laughs> I get the gold star for so many years of my life I went through the cycle of well basically just going through the cycle I had the best decorated masquerade yeah. <laughs> mask on like smile on the outside toe up toe up not tore yeah. <laughs> toe up on the inside we're going through the cycle hey how are you doing going to church going to work going right. home right cycle and it just there was so much turmoil going right. on on the inside and I felt like I had no one to reach out to or I didn't trust anybody I wasn't honest with myself about what I was really going through so how can I be honest with somebody else so God has a way of getting to you and breaking you all the way down you know so 2009 2010 that was kind of my point of like okay go be like yeah. It's too much. It's right. enough. Let's get it together. So, yeah. 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 But uh, if, if I can chime, that notion of knowing um, who self is, right? I think our natural uh, inclination is is to cover ourselves, right? It's that self preservation, right? Yeah. I'll tell you something. I, at my lowest point, I came across a quote that said, "What is to give light must endure the burning." Right, and and we don't we don't think about fires which they illuminate a room. They're actually being consumed, right? Lights. They're consumed. There's this violent interaction that's going on that is, but we take it for granted, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's that place, right? If, if we are to be light bearers, right, we must endure all of the chaos, the all heat. of the stress, all of the oh, you know all of those things, right? Because then. You know, people say, let your light shine. Th that's how you see it, right? right. It, it, it's that <laughs> you see it when you say it. I tell my military, your story was really that you went into the military and you successfully accomplished your goal, right? Mm -hmm. People thought, oh, she had a baby. It was over. But the story continued. Right. Right. And so, so yeah. And the story is still being it's written. It's still right? being written. Right. It's not a, yeah. it's not a period. It's a dash. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. A continuance. Yeah. yeah so. It's going. Most definitely. It's going and uh, something that you all said earlier uh, about knowing the right time to share. Yes. Uh, um, I was listening to Sarah Jakes yeah. on last night. Yeah. She said, you can be full of wisdom and share it with someone at the wrong time oh. and it will destroy them. Yes. Right. Yeah. And I was sitting, I sat straight up in the bed and I was like, oh, <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> you know, and so you have to know when to hold them. Okay. <laughs> and right. then, um, it's just, um, we're going to have church here in a minute, y'all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we want to give a few more shout outs to um, the people. Uh, good morning to Miss Kimberly Smith and Tarlisha Barker says that's my girl Tiqua. Uh -huh. Morgan Marshall says determination. 
And um, Mr. Jerrion says, Zuri is saying hey to Gran. Hey, and you Zuri. wave back at her. Hey, Zuri. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, Zuri, how you doing? <laughs> all right, so our next question is, all right, how important is it to live a life free of labels that society would try to adorn you with? I think we've kind of touched on this before, but just to sum it up, how important is it to live a life just free <laughs> of labels? Well, you have to be free within yourself. Okay. <laughs> and when you're free, then you are free to walk away from any and everything that does not define you. And um, I'm going to take it to church here. <laughs> Only God can define who we are. Okay. And so once you know who you are in him, you just walk it out. And my journey is not like yours. We That's have right. similar right. uh, occurrences or paths that, you know, or milestones yes. but our journeys are different uh, we can't compare ourselves to others mm -hmm. and um, if we do then you're telling God that what you did for me wasn't good enough yes, you know God that wasn't good enough I want to be <laughs> like her you don't know what she went through to get to that point you know what I, I do these little things called Q's Pink Gems of Wisdom and I was watching a movie and there was a lady there were two friends one used to date this guy, but the other friend ended up marrying him. Well, the one friend wanted him, basically wanted him back. And he said the only reason he married the other girl was because, well, the other wasn't available. Stupid reason. But anyway, so long story short, the first girl ended up getting him back. But she realized she wasn't looking at the, the outside image. You know, he was a football player, had a lot of money. She didn't know the turmoil in hell that came with this guy. Wow. And so she got it, though. And she got to the point she almost wanted to end her life. And so we see the grass on the side. We think it's greener, but we don't know what the upkeep is like yes. for that other side. And we don't know the, we see the glory, but we don't know the story. I know that's a cliche, hmm. but. <laughs> it would be the truth to it. <laughs> yeah, so, yes, ma'am. We see They'll what see. other people go through. Exactly. I, I used to be kind of envious of one of my girlfriends who has multiple degrees, no children, house, car, and all this. I'm like, but our paths were different. So I have to accept the path that I was on and work harder to try to get to where she is or get to some a semblance of, get somewhere close. <laughs> because in actuality, when you look at it from a bigger perspective, your journey um, is to help those who have gone through some similar situations that you have and you are the beacon of light for many. Yes. Dr. Tate. Is that beacon of life for many? Yes. Tiku is that beacon of life for many, and then myself, a beacon of life for those who come from, you know, single parents in small town. Um, I didn't finish college; I put it on the back burner, but I'm owning and operating a business. It's a successful business, oh, you know, and the gifting is there. You know, the love and the nurturing is there, and uh, and so you just do you. That's it. You do you and not worry about what the next next person thinks. And that's where I am in life. So I just be just as tickled. Mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, and uh, I've gone through a lot with that daycare when I first opened. Um, seven days after I opened, we had gone through a renovation. Seven days after I opened, guess what happened? The building was totally destroyed by a flood. Mm. And during that time, that was the best and the worst thing that could have ever right. happened to me because I found out who I was okay. and I found out who I wasn't. Okay. <laughs> and um, a lot of crying and frustration and, and bitterness and anger and all of that, all those things came out. But when we reopened, because we exhausted all of our money into the first reconstruction, so we got, went through two reconstructions. Wow. And so... It's a better appreciation. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. You know, and I'm still standing. And mind you, this is my second child care business. Yes. I had one year, 10 years, 12 years ago, that was an epic learning experience. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the doors closed. And then, like, you know, I've shared with you all, my son pushed yes. me back yeah. into this. Mama, everybody, every time I tell you something, like, your mama gonna store daycare again? <laughs> your mama keep your kids again? <laughs> And because I was fearful, because I had gone through that first experience, I just brushed it off and I, I would play sleep. Oh. 
whenever he would ask me questions so or try to ask me questions because I just didn't want to tell him no son I, I haven't checked into it yet <laughs> but when I got over that initial fear from all of the talk the disappointment you know failed in the eyes of a lot of different people I got rid of me <laughs> And I walked back into it, and so, you know, we just moving on because now I'm leaving an inheritance for my grandchildren because we have seven. Amen. That's awesome. Amen. <laughs> All right, Ms. Tequa. It is important to live label-free from society because you have to kind of define, you got to know how you want to walk and how you want to talk and things about you. But... You can't hide from labels of society. People, they gonna label you. Yeah. They gonna, I mean, they gonna do it regardless. But you can't take that label. Oh, they labeled me this. So uh, one thing that has really stuck to me, and I've been preaching to my brothers about it, is that statistics is just a majority. You know what I mean? Like they may say, uh, you know, if you get pregnant in high school, you're not gonna finish. Okay, majority didn't finish, but I will. You yeah. know exactly, what I'm you're the difference. <laughs> right, <laughs> so you don't the have to be agent. a yeah. statistic. You can, or whatever society may label you, you can always overcome that by what you want to do, what you, how Most you want to walk it, how you want to talk it. So yeah. that's the important thing, knowing that you don't have to take that label just because somebody handed it to you. You know, all money ain't good money, all labels ain't good labels, so <laughs> you don't have to take it. Yes, ma'am. All right. <laughs> no, I, again, um, the, I think the challenge is, is that labels are in place, right? Um, in leadership, we talk about labels allow us to place things in a box, okay. <laughs> right? And so we know what happens with the box that contains, right? And so we have to, we have to um, be mindful. But I think that, I think the uniqueness of us as humanity, um, labels allow us to negotiate at, at different points in time right so um you know some will say you know, i am a woman right? okay um that helps them to nurture or or or, or understand their identity okay um but i think on the on the on the flip side of that i am a man right we saw we just celebrated 50 years of the sanitation worker strike, right? Okay. Um, with the assassination of Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. But that campaign was so instrumental because what it do did is it said, no, I want you to understand the dignity of humanity, mm -hmm. right? And so, and so s labels can be good okay. depending on the scope in which okay. um, they're presented, right? Um, and so, so, so we're always negotiating, always trying to understand um, okay. who we are at a particular point in time. And I think broader is always better. Okay. Right. All right. So I want to uh, transition to a website that I found. If anyone wants to, you know, follow along, go to living number four bliss dot wordpress dot com, mm -hmm. and in the search box you can type in um, the Kwanzaa principle of uh, self determination. And it'll pull up this wonderful little blog. I call it a blog, an article, if you may. And it gives a little more detail. And this actually goes into more detail about the candles and all the different symbols that go along with Kwanzaa. I really want to encourage everyone to learn more about Kwanzaa and what it means for our culture and our people and learn the different symbols and the items that go along with it. The candle holder, which has an official name, I apologize at the moment. Um, the candles, the colors of the candles, and the significance of every single thing that goes along with this celebration. Um, Kwanzaa is about celebrating the first fruits. And these different, these seven different principles are the foundation of what a community should be built on. They each have a very significant meaning and it should have a significant meaning to you and your family mm -hmm. and your community. So I really encourage everyone to go out and do some reading for your own, yeah. on your own. Um, we have a comment from Ms. Morgan Marshall. She says, can't accept someone who's already made your fate, follow your own path. Yes. Better results come from being your own leader. Amen to yes, that. That's true. <laughs> All right, so concerning self determination, self determination is the foundation for all success, no matter what the struggle. We determine our future. We are responsible for our own success. I think everyone has translated that very well here today that 
people will try to tell you which direction to go, but it's up to you to decide, am I going to accept what's their choice or am I going to follow my own path and be my own person? And again, as I mentioned earlier, you can't be in oneness with the community if you're not in oneness with yourself. And I saw that. I I was watching a um, uh, ministry moment on Facebook and like, okay, you have to be in oneness with yourself (laughs) before you can be in oneness with anybody else. And so um, you've got to decide who you are, determine who you are, what path you're going on. Um, We must accept the responsibility. If we fail, it is our fault. Likewise, if we succeed, we determine our future in our lives. We even determine whether or not to take responsibility for ourselves and our lives. Let's touch. We have like a minute, two minutes left in this part in this segment. So let's touch a little bit on about responsibility. I think we kind of talk, talk about either one of you all talk about what it means to be responsible for yourself, whether you fail, whether you succeed. Um, what that means to you. <laughs> Taking accountability. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's just, um, if you know that you're doing something wrong, you know, take account, hold yourself accountable. Mm-hmm. And it kind of just show that you are responsible. And, and if you point it out before somebody else pointed out, you know, you kind of become trustworthy too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. But there's a flip side to that, right? I think we oftentimes look at it from the negative, but the positive is, is that, Many times you are the person in the room who will say, no, this is not right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right? And I think that we, when we look at policies, procedures, we look at structures that are not right, we would behoove ourselves to not say something about that, right? right. Because yeah. the systems in this current state will allow that to go on because there's gain yes. for that system. And so, sure. yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned I saw a commercial for a movie that's coming out. Um, and it's based on the Supreme Court Justice Ruth. Yes, um, Gator, Bader Green. Yes, and how she, in her earlier early in her career, she challenged a ruling that was basically discriminated against gender. Um, and so we'll get more into that later. We'll wrap up this discussion when we come back from our break. Okay. Um, again, you're tuning in to Community Conversations on Kelly K. 102.5 FM, and we'll be right back. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. Too often we are too lax about allowing other people to spend our money, especially the relatives, children, and romantic interests. Could this be you? Let's see. Track your spending for a month and put a special focus on money you're spending to provide for the wants and needs of others. In other words, buying things that they should do without or maybe even provide for themselves. For example, check for unnecessary spending on minor children. Food, water, clothing, shelter, and related utilities, these are the basics you should be spending your money on. Everything else, teach your kids to earn their own money to pay for it. The bottom line, No one has the right to spend your money. Don't allow others to drain your resources out of guilt, to prove your friendship, or as a show of love. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization focused on joy in our sisterhood, power in our voice, and service in our hearts. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. 
zero zero. Money Matters is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. This is how we do Hey, KLEK, it's your girl, Allie J, inviting you to come hang with us at Twilight Skate, January 15th for our 90s skate party. That's right, we're playing all your favorite 90s hits, jams, and classics in a special live broadcast on Facebook and KLEK 102.5 FM. It's only $5 to get in and $1.50 for skate rentals, Tuesday, January 15th from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. And if you missed it last time, here's your chance to come kick it with KLEK at Twilight Skate 2700 Phillips Drive for Night of the 90s. This event is a KLEK fundraiser. This is how we do it. It's Friday night. KLEK thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268, or online at lscihelp.com. This Christmas, Craighead County Circuit Clerk Candace Edwards hopes that you and yours will be touched by the real meaning of Christmas. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. As we remember the greatest gift of all, we wish you and your loved ones a blessed Christmas and a blessed New Year. The key to making this station even better could be parked in your driveway right now. Donate your old car to us, you'll get a tax deduction, and we'll tow it away for free. Go to klekfm.org for more information. The Craighead County Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Parade Committee will host the annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Youth Explosion Parade and Celebration January 20th and 21st. The theme is Unity. Youth Explosion will take place Sunday, January 20th at 3.30 p.m. at the Jonesboro High School Auditorium. The MLK Parade will begin Monday, January 21st with participants lining up at 9.30 a.m. and the parade starting at 11 a.m. at the Arkansas State University Armory. The MLK program will begin at noon at the Arkansas State University Fowler Center. The keynote speaker will be Dr. Logan Hampton, president of Lane College. More information is available via Dr. Ray Scales at 870-897-3076 or Deidre Jones at 870-819-7301. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. She was ready. All right. <laughs> She's going to talk about that book that she has coming out. Yes, well, I, you said it was one that said um, continue to take accountability or hold myself responsible. I would, uh, take, well, I would take responsibility for myself. I think I will continue to plan my future and believe that I'm in control of my destiny because I believe in manifestation. Anything I want, I write it down. 
I say it to myself. I look in the mirror. I talk to myself. I pray over what I want. And so I can't tell you something that I haven't prayed for and that I haven't got. Like, I really feel like I'm spoiled. By God. <laughs> but, um, and just to continue right now, I'm in the LPN program in Forest City. And so after that, I want to go get my CDLs. I know it sounds crazy, but hey, I'm going to be a motivational speaking nurse, <laughs> truck driver. <laughs> so... Um, and you never know where that could take you. I've always think big ones that we want to do. You can be, you can own your own transportation company, have a, a fleet of mobile nurses or something. Right. I don't know. <laughs> the, the population are <laughs> They are, most definitely. Um, I too, um, I like that I will continue to seek knowledge that I can use to provide for my family and me, as well as those that are a part of my destiny. Mm -hmm. You know, my families and the child care and their children. And as I learn, you know, I will share the information. And so the, the knowledge just continues to grow. And then we are interdependent on each other. And so we learn and we grow from each other. And the things that I can't do, I, I'm just assured that the Lord will connect me with those that can. And, and so. For Kelly K. And the platform that we have, that's our you know, overall mission is to be a voice and a lifeline and a connection, a hub, so to speak, <laughs> for everyone in the community to get the information and resources or access to the resources that they need. So I'm very grateful. Yeah, I, I really, I, I like these uh, principles, these resolutions. I, I like the, I will take responsibility for becoming a living role model for future generations, right? Um, our life is not our own, so to speak, right? It's not. And so we are meant to uh, leave a legacy um, that we were here. Right. And that legacy is really how, how do we treat others? Um, how are we encouraged to um, uh, reproduce ourselves right yeah. yeah so that's it I mean how do we reproduce ourselves in a way that uh, we can leave and see um, our influence right if someone picks up a camera uh, their pictures become translatable uh, and I had just a small part in that playing if someone is uh, sensitive to someone else um, and they saw me sensitive, that becomes uh, uh, leaving a part of myself. Mm -hmm. So, that's okay. it. I want you to share a little bit. I know we're about to run out of time, but um, I don't know how many people saw that your post was true. Was um, former President Bush? Yes. Was yeah, it was uh, George W. Bush. Uh, no, Herbert Walker. Okay. So, George H.W. Okay. And uh, I, I was a young kid in photography, and uh, Boisel Hosey, uh, one of my good friends, and uh, William Winston were my mentors. Okay. And so he came to visit the uh, George W. or George H. W. came to visit this photography program, and I had, you know, all of the program had their photos laid out, and he grabbed my photo, and he asked me to tell him about this particular photo: two children playing in a sandbox. That interaction really was affirming for me that um, I was doing what I was supposed to do, right? The, 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 the practice of telling stories of people that you interact with in their context, that's what I do, right? And so, so that was really a springboard um, for my life and my career because it was affirming, right? And each one of us, have that opportunity to affirm someone else Most definitely. and what it is that they're doing. And so when we look at self-determination, I think it's largely linked to how well do we interact in a way that others would uh, be encouraged right. to keep on keeping on. To keep on keeping on. <laughs> keep it moving. Yeah. Thank you. I think for my resolution, um, I'm community driven.
That's your mission statement. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for listening to Community Thank Conversations you. on KLEK 102.5 FM, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program